Hello, this is Umesh Thamija, chemistry expert from ChemZone. Now you are going to watch an online class on redox reactions. This topic will be of importance to those students who are preparing for the NEET and uh, IIT JEE examination. It's a general topic. In this uh, class, you will understand how to find the oxidation number and how to balance chemical equations by the oxidation number method and uh, ion electron method. And at the last, you will also you will also know what is meant by the electrochemical cell, their electrical conductivity, electronic conductivity. How does it vary with dilution? So watch this in complete manner. Happy learning, dear students. Subscribe my channel. You will be getting more videos uh, for learning chemistry. Don't forget it. Thank you. Yeah, we started with the dogs, right? So, how much we have covered? We discussed the oxidation number. Huh. What? Oxidation number we covered. See, we have. Yeah, we did. Okay, and after that, what we did? Uh, did we uh, practice the uh, uh, electrochemical cells? Uh, wait, what, what, what did you say? Electrochemical cell. Uh, we didn't do that. Yeah. And balancing of reaction? Uh, you, do you mean stoichiometry? Yeah, balancing of reaction. Just... Yeah, I, I know that. Okay. By the oxidation number method and, uh, and, uh, and reduction method? Yeah, I know that. Okay. So, suppose we are given this equation, Cr2O7, 2 negative, sulfite ion, giving chromium ions and uh, sulfate ion, in the acidic medium. right okay you have to balance the equation by the oxidation number method and uh, in competitive examination what we are uh, what we are asked is here they give a b c and d what is the value for the a b c d it means you have to balance the equation right yeah and we can balance it by a method known as an oxidation number method and ion electron method. So it is the oxidation number method. I am discussing about the oxidation number method first. Okay. Right. Do you know this method? Is it um? So basically, what happens is there's uh. So you, you balance out the equation, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah so uh, so there would be like um, I mean, let me write it down and solve it and tell you. Okay, I'll discuss that method now, right? I think I know how to do this. Um, you just need me to balance the equation, right? I can do yes, that. Yes, of course. But not by the heat and trial method. By the what? Not by heat and trial method. You know heat and trial method? Just uh, okay. count, counting the number of atoms both the sides. That isn't that, what you, isn't that what you do for oxidation number as well? First of all, we have to find the oxidation number of each element. Then balancing their charges and balancing the... Like all oxygen and hydrogen later. Okay. You know okay. Um, no. Okay, I'll discuss that one first, right? So, yes. step one. In the step one, you have to write the skeletal equation. Skeletal equation means what we are given here. Uh, right? This is a skeletal equation, Cr2O7, 2 negative, sulfite ion to give uh, 
chromium ion sulfide ion sulfide ion right and you have to write the in the second step you have to write the oxidation number of each element at its top so you write again So find out the oxidation number first. For the chromium, how much do you find here oxidation number? Uh, that should be um. At first, you find oxygen, right? No, yeah, oxygen. You know, it is minus two. Yeah. So then the uh, chromium would be the uh, positive value of that. So it's like fourteen. Yeah. Or 12. So x is equal to 12 and x is equal to plus 6. So it's a plus 6 here, right? Oxygen is minus 2. And sulfur is the plus 6. Because like SO3, 2 negative. x minus 2 into 3 is equal to minus 2. Or x minus 6 is equal to minus 2. Or x is equal to plus 4. So that should be plus 4 here. Okay. Okay. Chromium here is uh, plus 3 and sulfate ion is uh, plus 6 here. This is the next step you have to take. Then the third step, what you have, what you need to do is uh, determine increase and decrease in oxidation number okay increase and decrease in oxidation number like this plus 6 here plus 4 here plus 3 plus 6 you can see that oxygen is not undergoing any change minus 2 on the right hand side and minus 2 on the product side so yeah. chromium is undergoing change here that what we call as a decrease in oxidation number by 3 into 2 because there are two atoms right is equal to 6 and uh, plus 6 to plus uh, plus 4 to plus 6 this is a increase in oxidation number by 2 right okay. okay after this what you need to do is this 2 to be multiplied with this one and 6 with the, this one so I should 2 multiply by here and 6 multiply by here. In short, I can say 1 and 3. Cross multiplication. Right? You getting me? Um, wait, what? Why didn't you multiply by 2 for the... See, see. For the sulfide ion, the increase is by the plus 1, plus 2. And right. for the chromium, it is by the 6. So you have to cross multiply 2 with the chromium and 6 with the sulfate. Or we can say 1 and 3. Um, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But... No. Wait, no. What happened? Hold on, what happened? See, for the sulfur, plus 4, 2, plus 6, it is increased by 2, right? Yeah. And for the chromium, it is a plus 6, 2, plus 3. We can say it is a decrease by 6. Um, you mean decrease by 3? 3 into 2, 2 here, 2 chromium atoms are there. Okay. So, you have to cross multiply 2 with the chromium and 6 with the sulfate, sulfur. 
in short we can say one three right okay so you have to cross multiply that's the and then balance all atoms except hydrogen and oxygen so i'm writing here all this So the two chromium here, I'm multiplying here with the two, right? The three sulfur here, I'm multiplying here with the three. Are you getting now it? you're balancing equation, okay? Yeah. And now balance oxygen atoms. How can you balance? Okay. See. 7 oxygen plus 6 oxygen total are equal to 7 plus 6 is uh, 16 oxygen third there. Right. 7 plus 6 right yeah 3 3 plus 9 9 plus 7 9 plus 7 is 16 okay what did 9 9 how comes 9 yeah 3 plus 3 into 3 9 9 plus 7 16 oxygen here and here we have a 4 oxygen, uh, 12 oxygen here. So we are deficiency by the 4, so you multiply or you add 4 water molecule on the oxygen deficiency side. Because in one water molecule we have uh, 1 oxygen. So deficiency of 4 can be covered by what it do? Yeah. So our oxygen is now balanced, right? Yeah. And now if you see a balancing of hydrogen, you have eight hydrogen here and zero here. So you add here 8 H positive on the reactant side, that is hydrogen deficiency side. Why did you add the four water again? I kind of get lost. Just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, Vasant, can you give me just one minute, right? One minute. Yeah, sure. Yes, Vasant. Yeah. So, so how, how, 
how did the how did you add four waters in step six? Okay. See here we are having on the reactant side in this uh, step in the fifth step here. Sixteen oxygen on the reactant side, right? Yeah. And there are twelve oxygen on the on the product side. Yeah. It means that now we have a four oxygen less on the on the product side. Mm -hmm. That four oxygen deficiency is uh, compensated by adding four water molecule on the oxygen deficiency side. So can you? Is that like? Are you physically adding water to the no, experiment or? No, 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 no. It is just a theoretical method. Okay. Just so there's like. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then we have balanced the H positive ion. On the product side, we have a now eight oxygen. You can see here we have a eight oxygen, eight hydrogen. Sorry. And here we do not have any one, so we have added here eight H positive. Okay, and that's the balanced, right? Uh, if you okay. see the last equation here, we have two chromium here and two chromium here balanced. Three, yeah. Three sulfur, three sulfur. Oxygen seven plus nine sixteen oxygen here and twelve plus four sixteen oxygen here. Yeah. Eight hydrogen here and eight hydrogen here. Yeah. All the atoms are balanced. Yeah. And moreover, you can see the charges also. Two negative plus three into two, six negative. Six negative plus two negative, eight negative. Eight negative plus eight positive, neutral. Wait, wait, wait. How can can you repeat that? Yeah, we have a two negative here. Yeah. And two negative here. Yeah. Two negative, but multiply by the three. Six negative. Okay. Six negative plus uh, and two negative. Eight negative. Eight negative plus eight positive. Net is a neutral here. On the reactant side, we have neutrality. And uh, if you see here, three into two, six positive, and three into two, six negative. Again, it is neutral. Our all atoms and charges are are neutral. Okay. Right. There is no any uh, charge accumulation on either side, or the, all the atoms are also balanced. Okay. So could you go over all the steps again, just yeah, like? Yeah, so what we are given here, we are given this equation, right? Yeah. And for the multiple choice question, I'm asking, I'm telling you, the option come like this way. What is the value of the A, B, C, and D? That is my question basically, right? Wait, but they don't include water? No, they don't include water. We are we are supposed to add water because they are given already here the acidic medium. Okay. It means the uh, medium is there and water must be there. You have to add by water yourself. Okay. How, how much water that you have to add, right? So in the skeleton, okay. in the first equation, just I am writing the same equation as given to us. We call it the it is a skeletal equation, right? Yeah. And in the second step, write the oxidation number of each element. You know how to find the oxidation number. Yeah. So plus six here, plus four here, right? All this we calculated it, and then determine the increase and decrease in oxidation number. You can see plus six to plus three, decrease by three, multiply by two is equal to six here. And for sulfur, it is plus four to plus six, increase by two. Okay. Then you have to cross multiply here. Two with the chromium and chromium? Uh, three with the sulfide ion. But instead of two and six, I'm getting it as a one and three here. Right. Right. Okay, so, so you cross. Here. So three here and one here. Now you have to balance all other atom except hydrogen and oxygen. So you can see there are two sulf two chromium here. So I multiplied here the two. The three sulfur here, and so I multiplied here the three. Right. Right. Yeah. So uh, now we have to balance oxygen. 
count the number of oxygen on the reactant side you can see 7 plus uh, 9 it is 16 right and yeah. 3 into 12 oxygen on the product side to balance the number of oxygen atom we have added a 4 water molecule right yeah and now here we have 8 8 hydrogen so multiplied added here 8 hydrogen here Okay, yeah. That's it. Oh, it went off. Yes, tell me. You got it? Yeah. So this is how we do it in an acidic medium. If I give you one, you will do it. Um, I can try. Yeah. Have you noted down all the steps? Yeah. Okay. okay. No, I'm giving you one question. You try it. Start again in the acidic medium. Okay, so what's the step that you do when you get the oxidation numbers? Uh, after uh -huh. finding the oxidation number, okay, first find the oxidation number here. Plus 2 here? Plus 2, then plus, plus six. 6. Plus 3, plus 3. Oxygen is, yeah. minus, oxygen is minus 2. Yeah. And then you have to uh, see in the next step increase and decrease in oxidation number. You can say it is a increase in oxidation number by one, and it is a decrease in oxidation number by 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 three into two, six, and then you go for the cross multiplication. So six on with the iron. 1 with the chromatine, dichromatine, right? Yeah. And in the next step, you have to balance all other atoms except except uh, hydrogen and oxygen. So 6 here and so multiply here the 6, 2 chromium here, right? And then balance uh, all uh, oxygens here. 7 oxygen this side. 
so on the product side we don't have any oxygen so i am adding that side seven water molecule yeah and now here we have 14 hydrogen here we don't have any so on this side i'm adding here 14 h positive ion okay that's it if you see this equation this will be balanced equation yeah the step that i that i didn't understand was the increase like the cross multiplication part i hope it's clear right yeah no i will uh, not discuss one more method that is in a basic medium now Okay. Have you noted on all this? Um. Yeah. We are given this equation here. This is our equation, and you have to balance it in the alkaline medium, right? Okay. So this is my first step, writing the skeletal equation. In this second step, you have to write the write the oxidation number of each element at its top. I'm writing this equation again. It's a plus seven here, minus one, plus four, and plus five. Right? Yeah. Tell me which step is not clear. I I get I got all of them. You got it right. In the third step, you have to. Determine increase and decrease in oxidation number. Right? I'm writing again the same, and then we'll decide which is undergoing reduction, decrease, and which is undergoing increase. It's a plus seven to plus four. So we can say oxidation number decrease by by three. Three. And here we have minus one, and here we have plus five. we can say it is a increase uh, by 6 oxidation number increase by 6 mm. yeah yeah right. and in the next step what we have to do is a cross multiplication it is a 3 here and a 6 here so multiply here with the 3 and here with the 6 so instead of that go for 1 and 2 here getting me Uh, why don't you multiply to the right side? Why do you do it on the left side? Like it is by the rule. It is by the by the method here. Only. So you always multiply the the product the yeah. reactants only for the reactant side, not for the product side. It's a method. Okay. You have to follow the method. And now you have to balance all other atom except hydrogen and. Oxygen, two manganese on the left hand side, so I'm multiplying here the two, right? Right. And um, bromine is already balanced. So here we have a eight oxygen here, right? And here we have a four plus three, seven oxygen here. Are you getting me? Mm, yeah. So it means we have a deficiency of one oxygen. That we will be compensating by adding one water molecule on the deficient side. That is on the product side. Right. Okay. So uh, next step is balancing the hydrogen. You can see here we have a two hydrogen here. And here we don't have any, so we add here two H positive on the deficiency side. That is on the reactant side. 
Oh no 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 no. We have done something wrong here. What's wrong? It was an alkaline medium. I am doing it the basic medium. There's something wrong here. So what you do is don't perform these two steps. Delete this. Right. I will explain again what to do with it. Okay. Uh, wrong here. Right. That is really? the method that I was discussing in the acidic medium only. Okay, this is the basic medium. Yeah, with the basic medium. That's you have to take care now. In the basic medium, what you do is so you have to see the charges here. Negative charge multiplied by two. It is two negative here and one negative here. Means three negative on this side. Your total is the three negative on this side. And here we have only one negative. Right. So that can be balanced by adding the over ions. Over ion has a negative charge, and uh, that will be adding on the product side. BrO3 negative, and we add here two over ions. And by this way, the negative charge is balanced. So you can see three negative on the reactant side and three negative on the product side. Um. See, yeah, but there's, yeah. there's one positive from uh, MnO2. No, no, no. MnO2 plus. It's not a positive charge. It's oh, that's oh, okay, no, okay, never mind. Okay. It's positive. So uh, now we have to balance the hydrogens. See here that. Manganese is balanced, right? Bromine is balanced. Oxygen is 8 here and uh, 4 plus 2 plus BrO3 negative. Oxygen is uh, now um, 4 plus 3, 7 plus 2, 9. Here on this side we have a 9 oxygen and uh, here we have a 8 oxygen, right? So we have mm, yeah. oxygen deficiency on the reactant side. One or two? How many? Four plus three, nine. Four plus three, uh, seven. Seven plus two, nine. And, uh, yeah. And here we have uh, eight. So it means we have one deficiency of oxygen on the reactant side. So what you do here is uh, you add one water molecule on the reactant side. Only one water molecule. And by this way the oxygen will be balanced. Check it is balanced or not. 4 oxygen plus 1 oxygen 9. And 4 plus 2 8. 8 plus 1 9. 9 oxygen this side. 4 plus 3 7. 7 plus 2 is 9. Okay. And hydrogen, you can see two at this side and two at this side, they are automatically balanced. Yeah. Getting me? Yeah. So, this is the balanced equation. This is the basic medium. Remember here how to do it in the basic medium. Okay. This is the uh, method known as a oxidation number method. Similarly, okay. we can uh, balance it by the ion electron method also. By the ion electron method. But that is not required right now. We can do it by the one method only. Because our question will be coming like this. Uh, identify the coefficients. You okay. can do it by the either either method. You will get the same result. Okay. Right. Right. And now I will be discussing about the next topic that is the uh, electrical conductance. Okay. Electrical conductance. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, I will be discussing some questions based upon it. Okay.
report from QuickTime Player. Recording stopped. Vasant, are you getting me what I'm teaching you? Yeah. It's a bit, uh, bit tricky. But not that much. It's a little bit new for me. <laughs> it may be new for you, but not, not very much uh, difficult. You need, of course, you need practice for that. Yeah, like stoichiometry, I've done lots of practice, so I know that, like, off the top of my head, but... Do you get time to practice questions for the week? Uh, yeah, I get some time. Mm -hmm. Like, right now at school, we just started gases, so... United States. This might be a morning time, right? Yeah. Is it possible in the morning time, like my morning and your evening tomorrow? I'll let you know. I'm not sure right now, but okay, I can no let problem. you know. No problem. Otherwise, uh, this time will be okay, right? Mm, yeah. Okay. Now, before we proceed ahead, we can discuss these questions. Can you solve these questions? Uh, four. Number one is four. Let us see here. It is a sulfur here and uh, sulfur, oxygen. This is a structure of uh, Na2S2O3. Right? Yeah. And uh, here we have a sulfur that is gaining electron. Then in that case, this is always minus 2. Remember. And for right. this, we can calculate here the x value. So x minus 2 for this sulfur. This is the minus 2 here, minus 2 here, minus 2. Sulfur of sodium is plus 1. So minus 6 and plus 2 is equal to 0. Or we can say x is equal to plus 6. It means now we have a minus 2 and uh, plus 6. Means second option correct answer. Right? Wait, how did you get the plus 6 again? Uh, you can see that uh, I'm considering for x for the sulfur. Okay. And this minus 2, I'm considering this uh, the sulfur. That is the minus 2 here. Oh, and net charge. Yeah, yeah, net charge. Yeah. And now you can solve for the question too. Uh. So, you, so do you need to draw out the stru the structure to do this one? Yes, basically. Okay. So there's something in the way of the question.
Uh, is the answer number one? Yeah, so, um, basically, uh, O and, yeah, I basically imagine the structure in my mind. Like this, right? Calcium with plus 2 here, right? So, this yeah. point will have a minus 1 charge, and this overall it will be minus 1 charge. So, at the, uh, O, C, L negative, right? And we have to calculate for the chlorine. Minus 2 for the oxygen. Chlorine X is equal to minus 1, or X is equal to plus 1. So plus one for this chlorine and minus one for this chlorine. Okay. Now go for question number third. Uh, I don't know this one. Fp zero point nine four O, and for the iron we have to calculate. So it is a zero point nine four into x minus two for the oxygen is equal to zero, or x is equal to two upon zero point nine four, or I can say it is equal to two hundred upon zero point ninety four ohm. So second option correct answer, right? Right. Any doubt? Uh, no. Okay. Now, uh, solve question number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, is it two? Uh, um, no. No. Wait, I'm talking about number five, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong question. Uh, is number five two? Let me check. The most common oxidation state of an element is uh, minus two. The number of electrons present in the outermost shell will be six. Because then only they can gain two electrons. Just like we have an oxygen element here, at electronic configuration they have 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. They have a 6 electron outermost shell, they gain 2 electron and they become O2 negative. Oxygen number comes out to minus 2. So it must have a 6 electron outermost shell, then only it can gain 2 electrons. It means third option correct answer. Mm, okay. If it has 6 electrons, it it already has um, four, so no, uh, oxygen is having uh, six electron orbital motion, six electrons, not four. Oh, okay. Say two S two and two P four. So the total is six, six. and uh, it can and gain two electrons to acquire two negative charge. It means the oxidation number will be minus two only when uh, it has tendency to gain two electrons. Okay. No, uh, call the question of four. Shouldn't it be 10? It should be 10, right? Yeah. But actually it is not 10. See here, it cannot be 10. I first of all prove it that it is not 10. 
if i okay. if see atomic see, number atomic number problem is a 26 and its electron and its electron contribution will argon complete argon complete for a fun 3d six so how many electron it can lose 3d5 uh, sorry so how many electron it can lose yes hasan um it can lose uh Max maximum is 6 wait why isn't it 4 is 2 Uh, I think uh, it's an exceptional case. I th I think you might. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. it's the half orbitals there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it can have maximum of the six electrons loss because after losing six electrons, it will it will acquire noble gas configuration. Yeah. Right. So it yeah. cannot be beyond six. So uh, I think ten is not an option. Of of course at all. Right. Okay. It so it's the end. so it must be six somewhere but why not plus 5 why not plus 3 that also we will not confirm it we are given a compound cro5 right its structure is like this remember its structure is like this okay it is not a butterfly structure and in this structure this is a peroxo linkage peroxo linkage and whenever we have a peroxo linkage the oxidation number is minus 1 both the sides and it is a minus 2 here and x here right so x minus 4 minus 2 is equal to 0 or x is equal to plus 6 okay okay it's a special case you have to remember it are there more special cases Yes, I'm not getting you. Are there are there any more like these that I should know? Yes, of course there are. Uh, have you noted on this? Yeah. Uh, we solve this question, then I'll discuss some more. Sure. Okay. okay. Question number six. So here on the uh product side the chlorine has a plus 1 charge right oxidation number plus 1 oxidation uh, on the uh, uh, on the product side on the product side it is uh this one right CN yeah is that yeah CN so the minus 2 is equal to minus 1 so x is equal to plus 1 yes okay and chlorine here is minus 1 Minus one. Lead on the right hand side is plus four. Yeah. Right. And uh, it is a Pb OH whole thrice minus x minus three is equal to minus one, or x is equal to minus one plus three. Two. It means the change in oxidation number of the lead. Lead is a plus four to plus two. Means decrease by two. And. Uh, yeah. And uh, chlorine is minus one, two plus one, increase by one, increase by two. So it is a second option correct answer. Yeah. Okay.
Is it option number uh, option number three? Which atom have undergone change in oxidation number? Uh, potassium is plus one here, plus one here, no change, right? Yeah. Chlorine here is a plus uh, one plus x minus six is equal to zero, and x is equal to plus five. Uh, plus yeah. 5 on the rectangle side and minus 1 on the product side. The chlorine has undergone change, right? Yeah. So, chlorine has undergone change. And what about oxygen? Oxygen here is a minus 2 and here, here is a 0, elemental state. So, oxygen and chlorine have undergone change. Mm -hmm. Getting me? Yeah. Uh, number two. Number two. Um, it is a compound like this. Right? Mm. Oxygen yeah. is a minus 2 here, minus 2 here, x, x, x. So 3x is equal to 3x uh, minus 4 is equal to 0 or x is equal to 4 by 3. So second option correct. Mm. Right? Yeah. Okay, nine, now ninth question. Uh, zero. C12 H22O11, right? Yeah. So 12x plus 22 minus 2 into 11 is equal to 0. Yes, of course it is 0. You're right. Right? Any doubt here? No. And now I'll tell, give you some more examples of the exceptional cases of oxidation number. Okay. This structure I am giving you, it is a Na2S4O6. What is the oxidation of sulfur here? Mm. So, uh, 2 plus? See one thing. See one thing. Uh, this sulfur that I am now, now making the black. This is bonded with sulfur both the side. It means difference of electronegativity is zero. It is not losing electron or it is not gaining electron. So the oxidation number is equal to zero here and zero here. So these two sulfur have zero oxidation number. And for these I am putting here X. So X plus X is my 2X. Minus uh, 6, minus 6, minus 12. You can see minus 6, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. Oxygen is having minus 2. And 1 plus 1 is 2 is equal to 0. 2x minus uh, 10 is equal to 0 or x is equal to plus 5. So these two sulfur are having plus 5. This and this has uh, plus 5. Okay, so you need to draw the structure first to yes, do this. Yes, yes, yes. So there are some exception case that I am not discussing. 
they are important okay one i had discussed here cro5 this butterfly mm. structure okay right now i no. ammonium nitrate find out for the nitrogen Uh, plus three and plus five. Hello. Yes, yes, thanks. Uh, is it plus three and plus five? Yeah, you dissociate them into two ions first of all. Yeah. It is ammonium ion and a nitrate ion, right? Yeah. So here it is x plus four is equal to plus one, or x is equal to minus three, not plus three. X minus two into three is equal to minus one, or x minus six is equal to minus one, or x is equal to plus five. Right? So yeah. it is a plus five and a plus three. Okay. Now, if I give you a compound, Fe three O four. What is the fission number of uh, iron here? Five. No wait. Two eight. Eight by three. Is it eight thirds? Mm -hmm. Actually, what you have to do is what you have to do is uh, this is a mixed oxide. You have to remember certain cases here, and it does not exist. It is a mixture of FeO and Fe2O3. If you find here the oxidation number of iron here, that will come out to be equal to plus two. And in this case, it will come out to be equal to plus three. Right? In case it comes out to be different here, plus two plus three, we have to take the average of the two. So two into one. one. Plus three into two divided by total number of atoms are uh, three. That is equal to eight by three. You have to take the average. Yeah, or you could just do it by the charge, right? Yeah. Okay. Any doubt here? No. Now I'll give you some more question practice now. For the question number one, the oxidation of manganese is plus seven. In which case?
Wait, permanganate is MN uh O MN04, right? Okay, this is a MN this is a MNO2. Yeah. Manganese uh, chloride is uh, MnCl2. Manganese sulfate is MnSO4. And potassium permanganate is KMnO4. Find out in which case we have a plus uh, 7. Number 4. Uh, number 4. Number four, that's good. Yes. Yeah, one second. Three plus or plus three. Plus three? Yeah. Okay. Six plus. It is a uh, one for the hydrogen, two x for the phosphorus, minus two into seven is equal to minus one, right? So it is mm. a one plus two x minus fourteen is equal to minus one. Or uh, two x is equal to minus one plus thirteen, or x is equal to plus six plus six, right? Yeah. Okay, number four. Is it two? A loss of, uh, yeah, you're right. Fifth question. Uh, number one. Gain of electrons. Uh, don't it say that it is a... Uh Decrease in oxygen number also? Yeah. Loss okay. of electronic negative element also? All these are correct. Oh, okay. I didn't see that. Okay. It's SO2, right? Yeah. 
सल्फर इज प्लस फोर हेयर माइनस टू हेयर जीरो हेयर राइट सो सल्फर इज प्लस फोर टू प्लस जीरो हेयर इट इज गेटिंग रिड्यूस्ड बट एच टू एथ माइनस टू टू जीरो इट इज गेटिंग ऑक्सीडाइज इट मीन एच टू एथ इज गेटिंग ऑक्सीडाइज इंक्रीज इंक्रीज इन ऑक्सीडेशन नंबर इज कॉल्ड एज ऑक्सीडेशन एंड डिक्रीज इन राइट एंड डिक्रीज इन ऑक्सीडेशन नंबर इज कॉल्ड एज रिडक्शन increases oxidation and okay all right Seven is three, right? It's not a redox reaction. No, zero. It is a uh, sodium is having zero oxidation mark here, and a plus one here. Chlorine is zero here and minus one here. It means sodium is oxidized and uh, chlorine is getting reduced. Okay. Right. Right. Ninth question. It's and it's number four. Number four, right? Number four. Let us see. <laughs> Substance undergoing oxidation. It say H two O two means oxygen is having minus one charge here, right? It is sodium is plus one here, carbon is plus four. It is a minus two. It is sodium is plus one, peroxide link is minus one, oxygen is plus four. It is minus two, minus two and plus one. Right? I have written all the oxidation numbers here. And now what you find here is uh, carbon is changing from plus four. No, it is not. Uh, Sodium is plus one. Oxygen is uh, yeah. Oxygen is minus two here and minus one here. It means this is getting oxidized. Na two CO three is getting oxidized. Increase in oxidation number is called an oxidation. Increase oh, I was looking <laughs> again. Uh, I was looking at number nine. Yes. Oh. <laughs> And oxidizing that will can gain electron, lose, decrease, all of these four things. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> and effect is here done. And now I go for the more theory. Okay. This is all redox reaction stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. It is just the beginning. The first topic I have discussed here. Finding the oxidation number and uh, just defining what is oxidation, what is reduction, how to balance the equation. It's just the first topic. Okay. And uh, now we start with the electrolytic conductance. Right. We we'll talk about the conductance now. So one minute, just one question. So for the NEET exam, are the questions gonna be very similar to the ones we practice? Are they gonna be harder? Uh, almost similar. Almost similar, right? I am giving you questions, those practice questions which I have been asked in the previous examinations. Oh, okay. Right, uh, and it will be good if you go through your book that you have now. I don't know why, but I don't like that book because it's some in some places it's like a little confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Not they don't explain it very clearly, like. Um, I have like I didn't um, so for biology I'm using the uh, NCERT textbooks and um, they're they they're like really good in terms of explaining so 
uh, I actually uh, wanted to ask you, like, do you think I can use insert books for studying? First of all, to solve for the solved questions. In in the book you yeah, ha- you yeah, said? Yeah, yeah. In that book, you first of all solve the solved problems, not the unsolved. Unsolved, you will get practice only when, uh, like, uh, some some days after, means uh, roughly two months later, you will get enough practice. Because some questions are interrelated. Interrelated means two or three chapters are involved. Oh, okay. Right. So that is possible only when you know two or three chapters all together. That's where you are getting confused. I know. Okay. So that is why I am telling you. First of all, solve the questions which have been already solved, already given solved problems. Okay. And also, you can share those questions with me also here. that you find some problem and you can discuss it with me also okay okay i'll do that next class right in your next class you just uh, d- give me some questions that you are stuck somewhere okay okay and now uh was it just give me a minute huh? yeah Yes, hello. Yeah. So, what do you understand by conductance? Uh, like, like um, are they electrolytes? Like anything that conducts is like an electrolyte, right? This is conductance. Flow of charge. is called uh, conductance okay right. this conductance is of two types we will discuss here one is the electronic okay. conductance and second is the electrolytic conductance <coughs> okay in the electronic conductance electronic conductance is the flow of charge through electrons flow of charge through electrons just like we have uh, just a electronic wire just a metallic wire in which we have a free electrons and we connect it with the potential difference then what will happen the electron will drift and this drift of electron is called as a current okay it is uh, by the drifting of electrons and so we call it the electronic conductance 
but yes. but in case of electrolytic we have a uh, electrolyte which gets converted into ions upon heating that is in a molten state when you pass current here the sodium ion chloride ion they move towards the electrodes and this movement is the basically flow of the charge through the ions so we say this is a flow of charge through ions is called as the electrolytic conductance right right so this type of conductance is called as the electrolytic conductance first of all now i'll discuss about what is meant by the term electrolyte so <coughs> electrolyte is <coughs> wait a minute right on uh, uh electrolyte may be defined as a substance which does not conduct electricity okay wait which does not yeah does not conduct in solid state okay but conducts electricity in molten or aqueous state right yeah see here which does not conduct in this solid state but conducts in a molten or aqueous state okay for example we have this sodium chloride and it is a solid Okay. And we are connecting it with a wire, with a, a battery, and uh, we connect here some instrument that can detect current, right? Okay. That will not show any deflection. If I am using a voltmeter or galvanometer, or ammeter, or any device which can conduct, uh, which can uh, detect the current, it will not conduct. It means this is. solid nacl and into it is a insulator right sir and now if we have a nacl it is a na positive and cl negative right na positive yeah. negative in the molten state molten state means we have melted it now it is in the molten state so it is a na positive cl negative where passing current the ions are moving in different electrolytes mm, yeah right yeah so the ions are flowing or if i have a nacl and i had dissolved it in water it will form a na positive cl negative ions again again it will conduct electricity Okay. They can flow. They can flow. Such type of substance are called electrolyte. The substance which do not conduct electricity in the molten state, but they conduct electricity in the aqueous state or in the molten state. They are called as electrodes, electrolyte. Okay. Right. Mm. And now we discuss about the conductance. the conduct now we are discussing the conductance as a specific conductance it is also called the conductivity
Ok. Now, suppose you know that resistance is directly proportional to length of the conductor and inversely proportional to the area of the conductor. You know this thing from the physics? Uh, we didn't do conductors yet. Okay. Resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to the area of the conductor. Okay, it's so... To resistivity into L upon A. Where rho is called as a resistivity. It's not resistance. No, R is the resistance here. R is resistance. So, okay. resistivity is equal to R into A upon L. Right? Now, inverse of resistivity is called as a conductivity. And this symbol is drawn like this. It is not K but it is a German alphabet which me, which is a kappa or Latin alphabet kappa conductivity also called as a specific conductivity specific conductance right okay okay This kappa is equal to 1 upon R into L upon A. I have inverse this. So this specific conductance is equal to conductance into this L upon A is called as a cell constant. Right? Right. So kappa is equal to conductance into cell constant. Okay. What is the physical meaning now? I'll discuss that. Okay. This is the I have a beaker. And in this beaker this is the two electrodes. And whose length is one centimeter and area of cross section is one square centimeter. It means the distance between two electrodes is one centimeter and area of cross section is also one square centimeter. In between we have a uh, electrolyte, we have uh, some ions, we are passing current here. We have uh, cations and anions. We have A positive and B negative. These ions are moving in the opposite directions. L is the length of the conductor and A is the area of area between the two. If oh. I say the length is equal to 1 centimeter and area of conductor is equal to 1, so I will say cell constant is equal to 1. So kappa will be equal to conductance. Are you getting me? Um. I am saying the electrolyte is in between the two electrodes. These are the two electrodes here. Right? This and this are the two electrodes. Okay. And the distance between them is one centimeter and area of cross section is one square centimeter. Whatever the conductance is observed, that will be equal to the kappa. Because cell constant is equal to one. L is equal to one, area of is equal to one. So K is equal to conductance only. Okay. So, okay. we define specific conductance as a conductance due to all ions present between two electrodes separated by one centimeter and area of cross section is one square centimeter. Are you getting me? Yeah. This is called as a kappa. And based upon this, we will be solving some numericals. 
Okay. Okay. Tell me any doubt. Mm. So, like, L here is the length of the, um, of the, is it the distance between the two ions or two electrodes? Yeah, yeah. L is the distance between two electrodes. Um, okay, and resistivity is a constant, right? Yeah. Or is it? Is, like, what's the value of resi resistivity? Or do you calculate that? Yeah. Yeah, edit out. Mm. Okay, and kappa is also a constant. Kappa is uh, called the specific conductance. Okay. So, uh, have you done uh, in physics the chapter of electricity? No. Okay. I'll, I'll take a look. I'll, I'll go over this like a little bit in physics also so yeah. that I can start to see if I can understand some of this. Yeah. But because the, the yeah. only, only this much topic is required from a physics. Topic. I mean, I know between um, resistors and um, like uh, like electric circuits, but I don't know like electricity and like um. say if uh, we have a long wire right okay at every collision there will be resistance because every time it collides there will be some hindrance in the friction the flow of the charge every time it moves and it faces some resistance it means resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. More the length, more resistance it will have. Okay. And uh, this is directly in what you would say area of cross section. This is the area of cross section. If the area of cross section is more, then more atoms can move simultaneously. Resistance will be less. So I say inversely proportional to the area of cross section. If I have to pass 100 electrons from this or 100 electrons from this area, in which uh, the flow will be faster? Um, 100 electrons I am trying to pass through the wire here. One is the, the thick wire, another thin wire. Thin wire, right? Thin wire will have more uh, less uh, less area. So less number of electrons will enter into the wire. But yeah. uh, more number of electrons will move simultaneously. Oh, okay. And that is why the resistance is inversely proportional to the area of protection. Okay. Right. So this is how okay. we are going to solve now. So we end our class now and we will continue tomorrow same time. Yeah. That, same time, okay. 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 See you. Get more.